If, like many other people, you are confused about these settings in the classic release pipelines of Azure DevOps, look no further. Today, we're going to clarify this once and for all. Let's dive into it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Coder Dave, where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. Today's Today's topic has been highly requested in the comments of some videos and also on some of my social media platforms. And by the way, if you're not following me in any social media, feel free to pause this video right now, go down in the description box and check the links to all my social media platforms. And before we start, I really want to thank Krishna for being my new patron. And if like him, you want to have access to exclusive content, Q&A and much more, check my Patreon at patreon.com slash All right, enough of that. Let's check some settings out, shall we? First off, let's see where to find them. Just go to your classic release pipelines and open a pipeline. Click on edit, then options, and finally integrations. And here you have those five infamous options. Okay, with that out of the way now, let's go into Azure DevOps and see those settings one by one in depth. All right, for this example, I have set up my Azure DevOps this way. So I have some work item here that I will use to showcase the different options. Then I have this simple CI, which as the name say, is the continuous integration definition that is triggered from any changes I do on the repo. And then I have this simple CD release definition, which is where we will be tweaking the settings and it's triggered by the artifact from the simple CI build definition. Let's go to the options, integrations, and let's talk about the first one, this report deployment status to the repository host. When you enable this, and if your sources are in an Azure DevOps Git repo, this option displays a badge on the Azure repos page. And this badge indicates where the specific commit got deployed and whether the deployment is passing or failing. Let's see this in action. Let me change something on this file. Let's change this to BBB. Let's commit. And I want to associate this task. When I do the commit, my CI should be running. And as soon as it finishes, my CD will be kicked off. Okay, the CI has completed. Let's go to our CD. And we see that our CD is deploying in dev. Let's wait for it to finish. I can see that it's deploying and it's done. So now we are done for dev and production is in pending approval. Let's go back to the repo page. And we can see up here that we have this badge with in progress. If I click on it, I can see that the status of my CI is completed with success. And then I have here the status of my CD. I can see that the first stage is completed and I can see also that the second stage is still ongoing. And if I mouse over, I can clearly see that this is dev. And of course, the other one is production. If I go back and approve the release in production, this will of course being picked up by Azure Pipeline. And now that this is done, we can go back to our repo. And if I refresh the page, I can see that now the status is succeeded. And if I click on it, I can see that both my stages are marked in green. And the cool thing is that this view is not only available in files, but you can see it also on commits. And in fact, you can see here the same thing and also in branches. So for each branch, you can see the status of the latest CI and deployment. As you can imagine, can be really helpful having a snapshot of your deployment status right in your repos. Let's see now the next two options, which I think are the most confusing ones because at the first glance at least, they look basically the same thing, while in fact, they are quite different. Before we do so, however, I would really appreciate if you can like this video, if you like it, or if you find it insightful or helpful, so more people can have that suggested to them. Let's enable now this report deployment status to work, and let's see what it does. Let's disable the other one just for clarity. And in here, you see that you can choose which stages you want to report back to the work. And this will be more clear in a second. Let's save this definition. And let's make another change to our test file to kick off the CI and the CD. Let's change this to CCC. Let's commit and associate the proper task. Task 1291. Commit and our CI and CD will start. Let me go back to the Azure board and to the work item we just associated. And as you can see, everything looks normal. We don't have anything in this section apart from the commit I've just done. And also in the link section, we have just the commit. Let's see if our CD is done. And we can see that our release is deploying in dev. And now it's finished. 
Let's go back to our work item and we see that here nothing changed. However, if we go to the links, we can see that it's marked as integrated for the dev in the release number six and it succeeded. So what that option does is linking in the work item the release definition run for the stages we've selected. And in fact, if I go back to the CD and I approve the production deployment, we can see that when it finishes, it will be present in the links section as well. Let's check back to the work item. And here we have our release run linked as well as succeeded. And once again, if I go back to the details, you can see that nothing else has changed. Let's now disable this and enable the report deployment status to boards. As you can see, the UI here is different. We still have the stages we have in our release definition, but we need to map them to a deployment type, which is predefined in Azure DevOps. It was already able to map the stage prod to production. So what I have to do here is mapping my dev to development. I can choose from within these five values. Choose development. Let's save this. And once again, let's change our file. This time I will do two changes. I'll revert this back to AAA and I will add a new line. Commit again. And I want to link both this work item and this work item. Let's commit. And once again, needless to say, this will start our CI and when it finishes the CD. But I want to show you again in work items, let's pick the 1293. Again, we have nothing here and we only have the commit link in the links. Let's see if our CD is progressing. And we can see that now we have the release seven, which is deploying in dev. And now it's finished. Go back to our work item. Let's refresh it. And this time we see that the change has been made in the deployment section. And we have this new development box. If I click on it, I can also see the run ID for the build and the deployment to dev. And it's mapped again to the development stage because this is what we indicated in the options. Once again, let's go back to the simple CD. Let's approve the production deployment. And let's go back to our work item. Refresh. And here we also have now the production line together with the development as we had before. And once again, we have the build ID and the deployment. And if I go to the links, you can see that I don't have anything here because the deployment is listed here. And the cool thing is that if you remember before I picked two work items. So if I go to the other one, I can see the same thing because this is applied to all the work items that were involved in that CI CD process. So to recap, the report deployment status to work would link your release definition in the links section over here, but the report deployment status to boards, it links it instead in the deployment section of your work items. Hope the difference between those two options is clearer now. And I personally think both can be useful, even though I like more the report status to boards because it's more immediate. But as I said, both have their own reason to exist. Finally, let's check the remaining two options. And by the way, if you've made it this far, why not consider subscribing, right? I have content like this all the time. Let's see the final two now. First one is this report deployment status to Jira. If I enable it, I can select my Jira Cloud account. And this is populated by installing the Azure Pipelines for Jira app in Jira Cloud directly, and then adding an organization to it to create the connection. Now, I don't have any Jira instance available, so I cannot show you live, but this works very similarly to what we've just seen for Azure Board. I can select the stages I want to report, and I can map them to a deployment type. And when the release pipeline will run, we will have the same kind of link, but this time into Jira. Finally, if we take a look at the last one, enable the deployment status batch. Once again, I can choose the stages I want to generate the badges for, and this will basically give me a link that I can copy and paste in any of my, for example, readme files in GitHub or anywhere else, maybe a website, to show the deployment status for this specific pipeline in that specific environment. And then I can paste it anywhere, including my browser. And as you can see over here, let me make this bigger. I have the deployment and the status. This is pretty cool, right? 
Now the release pipelines in Edge DevOps have no more secrets for us, right? <laughs> anyway, there's more to say actually, but I will leave that to another video. Let me know in the comment section below if you now have a better understanding of the platform per se and all the settings, and if you think this explanation was good. And finally, you may wanna check this video over here in which I compare YAML and classic pipelines and their pros and cons. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.